This is part two for the uh, martial law indicators. We're moving into now, martial law has now been declared. We're moving into the stage now of civil war, revolution, or reset. I know there's people that get really uh, hot under the collar on differences between civil war and revolution, so I'm not going to say one or the other, okay? But we're moving on now. Martial law has occurred. And first off, who would be the ones involved in it? Who would be the ones going after the patriots, the militia, the constitutionalists, the conservatives, the uh, nationalists, your average American people? Or at least your uh, red-blooded American, as they used to say. First, you would see in that group would be conspirators or the people that are members of the coup. Now, in that would be their cannon fodder. Their cannon fodder, at least currently, would be your Antifa people, the socialists, the leftists, the communists, the Marxists, the Maoists, the anarchists. Quite frankly, they're all the same. Regardless of what little group they call themselves, they all are the same group. Along with that, you will have misinformed military and police. They'll be lied to. Some of them will support what's going on. They will be, they over time, they will become more of the extremists that you'll see later. But you're going to have a lot of military, a lot of police that are misinformed as to the reasons for why this stuff is happening. They're being lied to. They might be told that a coup is taking place and they're being called up to prevent it from happening. In actuality, they're the ones that are being used as the ground troops, the boots on the ground for the coup. But they're being told they're trying to stop it. Now that initial stage, that can last a few days, it can last a few months. But over that time, a lot of this military and police, they're going to see what's going on. And they're going to start choosing sides. They may be a fence sitter in the beginning. They're just going along because, hey, this is the orders. But after a while, it's going to start gnawing at them and they're going to have to choose. Are they going to, let's say, join the rebellion? Or are they going to join the Empire, to use a Star Wars analogy? Okay? Now, during the initial phase, that is when you will see roundups and outright executions. Now, the average militiaman, the average patriot, the average gun owner, the average survivalist, prepper, constitutionalist, we will not be rounded up. We will be killed. They will show up at your place, kick in the door. They're not even going to bother to knock. They're going to come in, they're going to swap raid the place, and they're going to come in and they're just going to gun you down. They'll shoot you, they'll shoot your family, as I've mentioned before. If media ever shows up or any press release is allowed to go out, they will say that you killed your family and yourself. The only ones that will get arrested are the ones that they think could provide them with needed intelligence or that they could exploit later. So that would be your leadership, your politicians, maybe the media people. People that they're going to try working on, that they're going to try brainwashing, they're going to try torturing. They're, those are the ones that would be taken to your quote-unquote FEMA camps. It will not be your average gun owner. They're just going to come in, kill you, and take the weapons. You know, they're not going to come in, kick in your door, and arrest that survivalist just to get his weapons and his food. They're just going to kill him, and everyone who's there, to include small children, they're just going to wipe out everybody, and then take what they want. Now, those raids, a lot of those will be done by the more extremist members. They've already identified the people that they know for sure will do this without question. There are psychos out there like that in the police force and in the military. People that get off on killing for the sake of killing. 
there's people out there in law enforcement whether you want to admit it or not and I know law enforcement does watch this channel there are people in law enforcement that get off on watching kids get killed get tortured it's sort of like you know pedophiles gravitate towards child protective services and the priesthood and teachers and stuff well you get the people that like killing people they also like to gravitate towards the police too and the military so in the beginning there's going to be a lot of shots fired and it'll go both ways they can't be everywhere at once they will go after the ones that are higher priority first. You can guarantee there's a priority list. There'll be a list of, we got to take these people out within six hours, these people without, out, take them out within 12 hours, these people within 24. You can guarantee that list has been established. And it gets updated regularly by the deep state. Now, the first year to two years of the reset, the Civil War, the Revolution, you would be still fighting the troops and the police, and these would be our own people, Americans. And the, the worst of the ones that you'll face are the extremists. They will get pulled away from your normal units and your normal police forces. They'll be put into the more well-trained and better equipped. They'll be the ones that get the high-tech stuff. They'll get put into units, let's say, the equivalent of the SS and the Gestapo. Okay? They'll be the ones that would be heading up your death squads. That's where your extremists will get pulled to. They'll get put in there. And then everyone else will be basically the cannon fodder. And I figure this will go on for a year to two years where it'll be American against American. Because the globalists, the people up top, they want to see us kill each other because that's fewer people they have to deal with later. Why send in their people to do it when they can just have us kill each other off? Less to deal with later. Now, during this phase, especially during the one to two, two year time period, a lot of it is going to be guerrilla warfare. It's going to be more traditional guerrilla warfare. It's going to be along the lines of what you've seen in Europe fighting the Nazis, the partisan warfare that was going on there. It'll be along the lines of the VC and the Viet Minh against the French and the Americans and the South Vietnamese and their allies. So you will see, especially in that first one to two years, after the first few months, if not right away, you are going to have units that are going to peel off from the military. You're going to have police peel off from what's going on. They've made that decision that they can't support this, that they are an American first and foremost. They will leave. I anticipate that we will see entire units of National Guard and Reserve and some units from active duty will just disappear. They get told, hey, you're going to go to this city over here. They get to that, uh, they roll out down the road. They get to that T intersection for the highway. They're supposed to go left. They decide to go right. And when they go right, you know, they're disconnecting the GPS trackers, the Blue Force trackers, and all that stuff that's on their equipment if they're military. They're turning off those radios and they're going to little handhelds they had someone buy over at China Mart. And they disappear into the woods with their equipment. And the stuff that they leave behind, they will disable. They won't necessarily booby trap it, but they won't leave it behind for someone else to pick up and use. Especially the police state or the coup, the whatever that's going on. They'll, they'll damage it beyond repair. So I anticipate you would see pockets of full military units, full National Guard, Reserve, and that stuff, elements from active duty, they would be the ones that would disappear into the mountains. 
they would go into the Rockies, into the Sierra Nevadas, into the Appalachians, into the Ozarks. They'll go into the forests. You'll see them move up into the, the uh, American Redoubt area, the Pacific Northwest. You'll see them move into the woods along the uh, northern border of the United States. You'll see them move into the swamps and in the, in the woods down in the southeast United States. Southwest United States, eh, it's kind of hard. It's a lot of desert region. Not too many areas to hide down there unless they go up into the woods. Now that's where you would, those guys would be fighting along the lines of what you've seen in Ukraine and Syria, where you're going to have the government type troops fighting against the defectors. And consider them that. They're defectors. They've left the coup. They've joined our side. They're fighting back. They've decided they're American. They're not globalist. They've defected. They've joined us. Now, so you're going to have those elements kind of operating at the same time. There will not be too much communication back and forth. You probably won't have too much link with the militia with those defector units. That will happen over time, but in the beginning it's not going to happen so much because no one's going to trust each other. But over time it will happen and it will have to happen. And what will occur, um, part of my state is wooded, and I'm not going to give you more information than that. And I anticipate that uh, a lot of National Guard and reservists and that stuff will disappear with their equipment into that area. Now, those of us that would be militia in the rest of the state, we can help them out. When we do our ambushes, we ambush a mechanized column, we ambush a motorized column, a supply column in that. We capture vehicles that we won't necessarily be able to use, maybe they could. Maybe they'll have a few people with us, or we have a few people with us that are trained how to drive the M1 Abrams, how to drive the M2, M3 Bradleys, how to drive the Humvees, how to drive the strikers. And as we capture that stuff, we hide it. And when we get enough of it together, we put on the uniforms of the enemy. We change the markings on the vehicles so that it, it matches the way it should for a convoy. And we convoy the stuff with false papers on the back roads up to those guard and reserve, those defector forces that are hiding so that they get additional equipment that uh, major items. You know, we'll probably keep the small arms and that stuff and a, and a bunch of the supplies, but when we capture the spare parts and the fuel and that stuff, if we can, we should try getting that over to those defector units. And then they need to cache the stuff, hide the stuff, protect the stuff, because we're gonna need them later. Because there's gonna be that phase where we go from guerrilla warfare to conventional warfare. And we are going to need those defectors in that. Now, after about the two year mark, that's when I think you're gonna see quote unquote peacekeepers deployed, your foreign troops. Uh, reason for that is the casualties amongst the US population will be pretty high at that point. Less people are going to be willing to join the military. So, the quote-unquote Tories, if you want to think of that, using a revolutionary term, the uh, colonists that were still loyal to the crown, you know, there's going to be fewer of them that are going to be willing to join the military to keep fleshing out those units that are be still loyal to the coup, loyal to the deep state. So they have to bring in troops from somewhere else, and that's when you're going to see them come in, probably as quote-unquote peacekeepers. So they'll come in as your I-4 and your S-4 and so forth. You'll still have your extremists on the battlefield. You'll still have your police state uh, SS units moving around your death squads. They'll still be out there. 
They're going to be less in the open at that point. They're going to be launching more lightning type strikes because during this one to two year mark, they'll be extremely cocky. They'll get picked off a lot easier. They're going to take casualties. They're going to learn from that. So then later on, around that two year mark, when those foreign troops start coming in, that's when you're going to see them more of they're on the bases than they're launching out by helicopters or quick vehicle strikes going out launching a raid doing the mission you know appearing for the cameras hearts and minds so on and so forth we're winning the war when we're actually losing things and then they go back into their strongholds and they let their cannon fodder take most of the casualties which would be your tories your uh, military that still is sitting on the fence or is supporting the deep state the coup but they're not at an extremist level they're just out there fighting because they're supposed to now how long would the war last statistically guerrilla wars civil wars revolutions and that stuff last about seven to ten years around the seven year mark is when things typically change the most at that point is when if it's a foreign invader the support back home typically turns against them turns against the troops involvement in a foreign land for the people at home in the country and stuff that are fighting at that point is when the population is either supporting the rebels or they're supporting the uh, the uh, government, the uh, deep state people. So about that seven year mark is when you're gonna see that really big shift. That's from history, this, this things you can read up on. Now I think around that point, around that seven year mark, now it could be at five years, it could be at seven years, could be at 10 years. There's no set, you know, hey, it has to happen at this point. There's lots of things that occur. But around that point, that's when you're going to start seeing the guerrilla force start becoming more conventional. And I think at least here in the United States, you'll see sudden Tet Offensive type operations going on. And it'll happen at in a state and in a region where... The militia will attack with support of those defector units that are still out there that have survived the bombing raids, the airstrikes, the chemical weapons attacks, the tactical nukes and all that stuff. You can guarantee those guys are going to get targeted to hell and gone. That's one of the problems with uh, having that heavy equipment, having those Bradleys, having that armor is it's going to be a draw for those cruise missiles, a draw, a magnet for those airstrikes. And then when those start failing, the enemy's going to fall back on those chemical weapons. They're going to fall back on the biological weapons. They're going to fall back on the nuclear weapons. But when those Tet Offensives occur, you're going to see the militias coming out, those guerrillas coming out, and they're going to start securing territory. Where before, it was secure territory, exploit it, get what you need from it, and then disappear again. So we capture an outpost, we strip what we need from it, and then we disappear. We capture it, we exploit it, get what we need, and disappear. But when that Tet Offensive starts happening, that's when it's going to be the militias coming out. They're coming out in force. They're taking over larger areas, and they're holding it. And the only way they'll be able to hold it long term is they will need those defector units, the ones that have been in hiding, the ones that have been fighting on their own little DMZ in the woods on the edge of the mountains and stuff. They'll come out hiding and they'll be pushing forward. And they meet up with the militia at that point. Everything should be pretty coordinated in that stuff. They'll secure that state, secure that region, secure that section of the state, whatever it is. And there'll be that, you know, drop of oil on the water. It'll slowly expand outward. And as they expand outward, other militia units and other conventional units 
will do the same thing. Now as time goes on here, as that force gets bigger, gets more conventional and stuff, you're going to see with these Tory units, these units that were loyal to the deep state, to the coup, the conspirators, the whatever, they're going to switch sides. You're going to see that more and more often. It'll probably be a squad of troops will do it, and then a platoon. It'll be a company, a battalion, a brigade. It'll be a regiment. It'll be a division. It'll happen more and more often, especially as the globalist forces, the deep state loses. As the uh, American forces gain more territory, get stronger, get more support from the people. There's going to be people that all through the war are going to be fence sitters. But as the tide turns and they see that American forces, the resistance, the rebels or whatever are getting stronger, they're winning. They're going to start putting their support behind them. It's just what happens. It's what happened during the revolution. As Francis Marion said, the swamp fox, you know, he may be on the other, that prisoner may be on the other side, may be the enemy today, and tomorrow he's going to be standing beside us because he understood what would happen. You're going to have people that are fence-sitting and they're waiting to see who, who gets the advantage, who's going to be the strongest in the end, and then they're going to tip one, one way or other. As we gain strength, that's when you're going to see those fence-sitters changing over towards the Patriot side, towards the American side. Now, what area from the U.S. do I think this is going to originate in? I don't know. I can't say if it would start in the mountain states, if it would start in the Midwest, if it would start in the South, the Pacific Northwest, and the North. I don't know. I know it won't happen out of California. I mean, that's pretty obvious. It won't necessarily happen out of New York or the Northwest of the United States because liberalism has just as much hold up there as it does out in California, whether you guys want to admit it or not. But uh, I think the war itself will last somewhere between 7 to 15 years in length. And I know that's pretty hard for some people to swallow. We've gotten used to wars last weeks and months. Okay, they're quick, they're done, they're over with, we won, you know, mission accomplished. But uh, what we've seen with Afghanistan, what we've seen with Iraq, that should give you some of it an idea that this stuff takes time. And this is a fight that's going to go on, and it's going to be a bad one. Okay, what people can expect while this is going on? expect banditry you're going to see criminals up the wazoo there's going to be criminals coming out that they're going to say their militia and that stuff in order to get things from the public and then they'll disappear just your average con artists that was in the movie american gorilla in the philippines if i remember correctly towards the beginning of the movie <clears throat> You'll have the con artists come out, say they're patriots in order to get money, get food and that stuff, and then they'll disappear and they'll move on, pull the same scam somewhere else. You'll have people come out and they'll be bandits. Okay, they'll rob people, they'll rape, they'll pillage. You know, that's going to go up considerably. At the same time, this is going on, same time this is going on, you're still going to have the police state. But the police state's really only going to control the major cities. They're not really going to control the countrysides. They may have a few uh, cops, combat outposts, forward operating bases and stuff in the countryside, but their, their zone of control is going to be the major cities, not necessarily out in the country. Out in the country, it's going to be kind of Wild West atmosphere. It's going to be, you know... You need to be on your guard because, quote-unquote, the Indians, the bandits, are, are going to come in at any time. You know, they'll come in the middle of the night. They'll round everyone up inside the house. They'll kill the male members, rape the kids, rape the wife, 
and then maybe kill them or they'll stick around for a few days for a few more fun, rape them to death, and that, you know, live off your food and your supplies and they'll move on. Or there'll be a lightning raid. They just come in, they kill you and take what they want and they leave. Food will be hard to come across. It will be hard to get. And that will be because a breakdown of the transportation system, a breakdown of the logistics of this country. This country lives on the just-in-time inventory system. There are no large stocks of food items in stores. Uh, warehouses and distribution centers uh, for major grocery networks, they don't have a lot of stuff either, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, it may be a big building, but really they only have a few days worth of supplies even in those to supply those stores. They even go off of continuous shipments coming in 24 hours of uh, groceries and stuff coming in of you know more shipments of diapers more shipments of toilet paper and soap and shampoo and everything that stuff comes into those warehouses and those distribution centers around the clock they just have a little bit more than what the store does but not much they're covering a larger area so they have limited supplies you're going to have problems with the farmers being able to get fuel to be able to run the tractors to plant the crops let alone get the crops into a truck and then run the truck from the farm to the elevator or the processing plant. There's going to be major issues there too. So food will be in short supply. And that is a weapon that the deep state will manipulate. You can guarantee they will use the food as a weapon. They will use that as control. They will give it out, but only if you give them information. They'll give it out only if you're loyal. You're reporting on your neighbor. You're reporting on your family member. You know, uh, medical will be extremely rationed, and that will be hard to get. Medicines and that stuff that comes out to the average person will be few and far between. Most of it will go to the elites, to the people in control of the deep state. And I just looked, this is a longer video. It's gonna, this is probably gonna go over a half hour. But medical supplies are gonna be really hard to get also. That will be seriously manipulated by the deep state, by the police state also. So there will be a lot of pandemics that will break out. They will wipe out entire cities. Entire small towns will get wiped out by virulent flus and other diseases. And likely a lot of those would be ones that would be released by the deep state in order to bring down the population, whether you want to believe it or not. Because that's what the ultimate goal of this whole thing will be, is depopulation, bringing down the average person, bringing down the quote-unquote useless eaters, I think is the term that they typically use for the average person. So, you will see a lot of death. You will see close family members die, to include children. You will see a lot of, it, it will be like it was in the 19th century and before. You know, a lot of children will be stillborn. A lot of kids will not live more than a few years because they'll get sick. They'll freeze to death. They'll starve to death. They'll die because their parents were killed. You know, I expect that during the reset, the Civil War the Revolution, we'll see the country's population brought down by over 60%. Possibly as high as 80%. Some of them will die on the battlefields. Some of them will just die for these other reasons away from the battlefields. Not enough food, no clean water, uh, no fuels to heat their homes in winter times. They can't cool them good enough in the summer times if they're in uh, warmer parts of the United States and they burn up with fever. 
not enough food, you know, it's, it'll be bad. It'll be extremely bad. So, when will this happen? That's probably uh, something that's going through your mind right now. When will this happen? And I'll toss this in here, you know, backcountry preps, you just asked this question a few hours ago, you know, what do uh, people think is the likelihood of uh, something happening this next year in 2019? My feeling is it's over 90% that something's going to happen. Now, I talked to a close family member of mine over the last couple weeks here with the stuff with the funeral for my buddy, which was a couple days ago. And I talked to this family member of mine that since Thanksgiving, I've just had this weird gnawing feeling that these holidays I'm spending right now with them is the last one I'm going to spend with them for a very, very long time. And that's not something they wanted to hear. But I told them don't tell anyone else. Okay, so just spend the holidays together and I told them expect that, hey, maybe one of these days they'll try finding me and I ain't going to be here. I'm going to be off in the woods. I'll be gone. I think right now, my gut tells me something's going to happen this coming spring. That some major event, some coup or something out in the open is going to occur in this spring. I think we're going to see the seeds planted for it here as soon as the Democrats take control of the House of Representatives here in January. They're really trying to play it up right now with the shutdown of the federal government. I think that's going to be part of it too. I just have a feeling they're going to keep building into this, building into this until they're going to say that, hey, we need to depose Trump to, you know, right America, put us on the right track, blah, 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 blah. And you'll see the neocon never Trump Republicans are going to join in with the uh, socialists, the Democrats. And it's going to be something that's going to kick off here in a few within a few months. It's probably going to be sometime in spring here. I doubt it's going to be during winter because they're not going to be able to mobilize their cannon fodder, the Antifas and all that stuff during the cold weather months. They're going to have to do it when it starts getting warmer. That's why I think it's they're going to kick it off starting sometime in spring. So Let's get a discussion going on this, okay, people? Um, let's hear your thoughts on it, on both of these videos, on the one on martial law indicators and the uh, reset, the Civil War, the Revolution, and that stuff that I think is going to be coming soon. Let's get a discussion going on this. Let's flesh this out some more. How do you think this is going to play out? Uh, and do you believe I'm way off base or do you think I might be on to something? You know, what am I missing? So Now for all my brothers and sisters in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay ons, let us try.